You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Thanks for staying with us as we kick off our 11 minutes of nonstop news. For the next 11 minutes, we bring you continuous coverage of your top headlines, weather and traffic. Here's what we're following. The trial for a woman accused of shooting and killing an alleged hit and run driver kicks back up today. Why attorneys say seating a jury has been so difficult. A Metro Atlanta man who died after being tased is now planning to file a lawsuit. His family is why they are now suing the tow truck driver who showed up. And it's a cold start to our day, but we have a warm up coming later this week. We'll talk about that coming up. We kick off your 11 minutes of nonstop news in Clayton County. That is where the trial will start back up today for a woman who was accused of shooting and killing an alleged hit and run driver. Ariana Manise is joining us live from Clayton County. Ariana, what do we expect today? Cheryl, it's day three of jury selection. This trial has been four years in the making as it's been years since Hannah Payne was accused of shooting and killing Kenneth Herring. Now, back in 2019, Clayton County Police, they testified that Hannah Payne shot and killed 62-year-old Kenneth Herring. Now, Kenneth is accused of following, Payne rather, is accused of following Herring after he left the scene of a crash where he reportedly hit a semi-truck. Now, Herring was experiencing a medical emergency, which appeared to be diabetic shock, she allegedly confronted him and attempted to make a citizen's arrest. That's when Payne shot Herring several times while he sat in his car. Now, she's facing a number of charges, including malice and felony murder. She currently remains out of jail on bond. Now, Payne's defense attorney says seating a jury has been a challenge when it's very likely that many of the potential jurors know something about this case. Now, jury selection will continue today. Following with opening statements the next day, they're hoping to see the jury by today with the trial hopefully wrapping up by the end of this week. Back to you. Ariana, thank you. We continue your 11 minutes of nonstop news in Atlanta, where the family of Johnny Holman, a deacon who died after being tased at a scene of a crash, is now suing the tow truck driver who responded. The 62 year old was tased by a now former Atlanta police officer back in August. In the new lawsuit against the tow truck driver, Holman's family claims he assisted that officer by sitting on Holman's neck and head during the struggle that led to his death. This morning, changes are coming to a number of elected offices in Metro Atlanta. Let's take a look at some of the runoff election results right now. Voters in Fulton and DeKalb County elected Alfred Chevy Brooks to the District 7 seat for the Atlanta Board of Education. Brooks is a current teacher in Clayton County. Members of that board will be responsible for finding the next superintendent. Then in Brookhaven, longtime city council member John Park is the presumed winner for mayor. He beat out local attorney and entrepreneur Lauren Kiefer. You'll find more election results on on 11alive.com, including Villa Rica's new mayor and a council seat in the city of South Fulton. That was a look at your Wednesday morning headlines. How are we looking out there? Gorgeous start to the sunrise, Andrew. Yeah, Aisha and Cheryl, a beautiful sunrise outside. I actually stepped out of the way of it. Just a stunning view there. Some warm colors showing up on the horizon, but don't be fooled. It's cold out there. We do have a chilly start for today. Not too much sunlight showing up up towards Blue Ridge just yet, but they still got the holiday lights on there in downtown. And then you see the wind really blowing those flags off the flag pole up towards Rome there in Floyd County. Those winds are strong this morning, so it's making it feel a lot cooler than what it actually is. The temperatures in the 40s feels like the 30s outside, so good jackets that can also break some of that wind this morning are what you're going to need. Looking off towards the north again, they had a few flurries closer on towards the Georgia and North Carolina state line. A lot of that's try, uh, starting to weather away, and that little bit of cloud cover that we do have out there in far north Georgia, that's going to thin out as we head throughout this afternoon. Temperatures today, they rise into the lower 50s. We're back to the mid 50s on Thursday, back above average for Friday and Saturday, but then we see another big cool down. That's going to come with our next cold front that's going to bring some rain chances. A 40% chance for rain mainly late in the day on Saturday and then a 60% chance for rain on Sunday. That's going to head, head all the way even into the early afternoon on Sunday. I wish I could bring better news than rain on the weekend, but we could use the rainfall. So at least we're getting a little bit of rain to help push back the drought a little bit. Forecast track picks up on some of the shower activity that we'll have over the weekend by Saturday at 4 p.m. Some of those showers start to move in, becoming a little more widespread overnight Saturday night into Sunday morning. Some of those heavier showers still sticking around even by 3.30 p.m. on Sunday, but then they move out by the end of the day. Sunday, we get some drier and cooler air in by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. So how much rain do we get from this one rain chance? 
chance, well, two rain chances for Saturday and Sunday, rather. Anywhere from an inch to three inches of rainfall, that higher total going to be up here in far northeast Georgia. And we'll take whatever we can get again because we've had a lot of drought out there. We're more than eight inches behind on rainfall here in Atlanta for the year. And you see that extreme drought again into far north Georgia. Here's your seven day forecast. Again, showing us that we're going to have lows in the 30s here over the next few days and highs in the 50s. I'm Liza Lucas. We have an update this morning on a Midtown security guard who police say tried to save a woman who set herself on fire. The family of 61 year old Michael Harris sent us this new photo. We're told right now he is recovering from surgery after receiving first, second and third degree burns last Friday. Authorities say Harris tried to help a woman who set herself on fire on Spring Street in an extreme political protest over the Israel Hamas war. Harris's wife tells us he's an army veteran and has been working in the security industry for 15 years. So when she heard that he jumped into action to help, she was not surprised. Michael is a very generous person. He has a very kind heart. There's no strangers. Uh, he's always willing to help a person regardless of the situation. We wish him well in his recovery. We also reached out to the Atlanta Fire Department. They tell us the woman Harris tried to help is still in critical condition. Liza, thank you. New this morning, a new proposal by the Atlanta City Councilman Antonio Lewis. It would make it illegal to wear anything that covers someone's face. This includes ski masks, barrier face coverings, hoods, or any device that might conceal someone's identity. Georgia already has a state code that makes it a misdemeanor offense, but Governor Brian Kemp suspended it during the pandemic. Of course, we were all wearing a mask. Since then, it has been rewritten to allow people who wear masks for medical reasons. Newly approved legislative maps are now headed to the governor's desk after lawmakers approved it. The state house and Senate approved the new maps. Those changes affect voters rights in Metro Atlanta. Over the last week, state lawmakers have met for a special session to redraw the maps following a judge's order. The judge said the state's current maps violate federal law because they dilute black voting power. Next year, we could see a new biography focusing on the life and legacy of the late congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis. The book from historian David Greenberg will use hundreds of interviews along with Lewis's FBI files. It will also feature material from a book that was never finished that Greenberg started while Lewis was still living. The publisher says the book will focus on his contributions to the civil rights movement all the way to his emergence as the conscious of Congress. Lewis, who represented parts of Atlanta, of course, and surrounding areas, passed away in 2020. He was 80 years old. You ask and we verify. People on social media claim shoveling snow can be dangerous for your health. So our verified team did some digging on this one. Can shoveling snow increase your risk of a heart attack? Here's what we learned. Snow shoveling is among the strenuous physical activities that can place extra stress on a person's heart, according to the American Heart Association. While shoveling snow can place extra stress on any person's heart, it is definitely a higher risk if you have heart disease, other conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, as well as people who are obese or have cardiovascular risk. So yes, share this with your loved ones who live, you know, maybe on the East Coast. We can confirm shoveling snow does increase the risk for a heart attack. If you find yourself somewhere shoveling the snow, not around here to decrease the risk, take frequent breaks, stay hydrated. You should also push the snow instead of trying to lift and throw it. You know, we got to keep it. Andrew. Yeah, Aisha, hopefully we don't have to do any snow shoveling at all this year here in North Georgia, right? Definitely not this next week. Looking at this next week, temperatures are going to get a little cool here, especially for tomorrow morning. Going to be about 33 when you wake up, rising into the 50s, warming into Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid 60s. Rain chances by the time we head into the weekend. They too will be stunning sunrise. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like it. We see the camera shaking a little bit in that wind. Yeah, it is a little breezy out there. So. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow morning. Live look at the airport as we head off to the Today Show.